we had seen a 11 g nested loop earlier let's look at a hash join in a hash join oracle starts with a smaller row set whichever table is expected to return the smaller row set is where it takes the column values from and puts them in memory as an in memory hash table the values are computed as hash values not the actual values but computes hashes on those values and creates an in memory hash table it then scans the second table so the scan may be a full table scan compares the values with the in memory hash table and a match results in a join the performance of a hash join actually depends on the size of the join key how many columns you have what is the length of those columns because the in memory hash tables size is based on the number of columns the length of the columns and the number of rows and if the high in memory hash table is very large the memory is insufficient it may overflow to disk oracle does not prevent a hash table from overflowing to disk but if it does overflow to disk the join will result in multiple passes to disk so performance will degrade so that is why oracle always expects to use a hash table with a smaller row set which means a smaller in memory hash table a hash join is possible only for an equi join table 1 dot column a is equal to table 2 dot column b you cannot do a hash join for a greater than or less than sort of comparison it has to be an equal to between the two tables we are going to use the same query as we had used for the nested loop demo but i put a use hash hint to explicitly force a hash join because we know from this query the transaction table is expected to return one row but the product table might be returning 14 rows so this is typically a case for a nested loop but i'm using exactly the same query to demonstrate a hash join and something extra in particular which you will see in the next screen here you see that the transactions table is accessed via an index range scan there is a common misconception that a hash join will always be a full table scan of both tables that is not necessary the first table that is a smaller result set can be accessed via an index range scan the number of rows returned from the index range scan from the table is what is placed in the in memory hash table here in this ex execution plan you will see only one row that means the in memory hash table consists of the join column for only one row but it, it could have been 5 or 10 or 15 rows as well and then the second table is scanned via full table scan so the product table undergoes a full table scan by the transactions table does not always have to be a full table scan it can be in next range scan as the first table in hash join so the first operation is the index range scan from the transactions index then it uses the those row ids to look up the transactions table in this case we will <coughs> expect only one row from the transactions table <coughs> for that row it creates an in memory hash table that is operation one if the number of rows were very large it expected one row but got 10,000 rows the in memory hash table might have overflown to disk and then it scans the product table via full table scan and it probes the in memory hash table for every value returned from the product table and successfully executes a join so what it does is that it expects the final result set from the hash join itself to be only one row so a hash join does not have to be two full table scans there could be an index range scan for the smaller result set and a full full table scan for the larger result set thank you